What exactly does dimension mean? I mean, we use this word quite a bit. We say we're living in three dimensions. We say the side of a wall is two-dimensional. This is a word that's fairly familiar to us, but, but what exactly does it mean? Well, one way you might answer this question is that if we have a vector and we want to say how many dimensions is it living in, we could say how many different components does it have? However, if we think about the video that we just saw on coordinate systems, when we think about a vector, a vector is an instruction about how to manipulate a set of vectors in a basis. In the standard basis, say the vector 3, 2, 1 says you go 3 in the E1 and 2 in the E2 and 1 in the E3. And then in some other basis, 3, 2, 1 would be an instruction 3 whatever the first basis vector was and 2 whatever the second basis vector was and 1 in whatever the third basis vector was. So what I'm getting at is the idea of number of components of a vector, which is sort of how we've previously perhaps thought of dimension, can be translated into the idea of how many different basis vectors do you have? Indeed, we are going to define the dimension of a subspace as being the number of basis vectors inside of the basis. Now, the big advantage here is that I don't have to talk about my entire space, like R2 or R3. We can talk about subspaces. For example, imagine you've got some plane, and that plane lives in R3. Well, the vectors in that plane, they still have three components because they sort of live in R3. So, but we'd be wrong to call the plane itself three-dimensional. However, since we know that planes can be described as the linear combination of, of two linearly independent vectors, that now we can recapture the idea that a plane is two-dimensional because a basis for the plane has two different linearly independent vectors. Now, we have to be careful about one point. Suppose I come up with a basis. Suppose you come up with a basis and that you and I have different bases for the same subspace. Could it not be the case that my basis had, say, three vectors in it and your basis had two vectors in it? We haven't yet proven that that's not the case. However, I'm going to assert it here as an incredibly important theorem. Every single basis has to have the same number of vectors if it's representing the same subspace. So in other words, this number of vectors that we have here, this is going to be unique. There is only one number that is associated with any subspace. Or another way to say it is that every subspace gets a particular positive integer attached to it. It has this number of basis vectors that is in each and every single basis that you might have for that subspace. So for example, a plane is associated with the number two, and we call that number two the dimension, and represents the fact that every possible basis for the plane, and there's a whole bunch of them, but every possible one of them is gonna have two vectors in it. So this is a very, very important theorem that you can only have this one number of basis vectors for any subspace because it allows us to make this definition that we did. The dimension of a subspace is the number of basis vectors. All right, now what I wanna do in this video is try to figure out how do I figure out the dimension of some of the standard subspaces we've experienced, the column space and the null space of a matrix. So I am gonna go and give an example and let's come up with an example that's already nicely in RREF form. So I'm going to imagine that I have 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 3, 0. So this is some particular matrix, and let me imagine I'm doing the null space one first. So I'm solving the homogeneous system, all of the AXs that are going to be equal to 0. As we've seen before, the process when solving this is to put an S and put a T in those free columns. And what we're going to get out of it is that the vector x is going to be s times 1 vector. That's going to be the minus 2, 1, 0, 0. I can just read off the top row to determine that. And then reading off of the second row, I'm going to get t, nothing in the first components, a minus 3 in the third, and a 1. And then you'll recall that if we wanted a basis for the null space, 
that those two vectors together are going to form our basis. And so if my question is, what is the dimension of the null space of this matrix A? The answer is therefore two because I have these two different basis vectors. We can do much of the same thing if we want to investigate instead the column space. You'll recall that we would previously analyzed that the column space of this particular matrix was going to be spanned by the two different vectors that are the columns with leading ones, the 1, 0, 0, and the 0, 1, 0, where we sort of threw out and ignored the columns that were free. We only kept the columns with leading ones when we were trying to span the column space. And indeed, that it wasn't just that these were a spanning set, that these two, again, are going to be a basis. And so for this particular example, it turns out that they happen to be the same thing, that the dimension of the column space of the matrix A is again going to be equal to the value of 2 because I have two basis vectors.